Welcome everybody. We are back. This is Jason and Alex here for the Sackos. We are uh, glad week 12, the gift that kept on giving is finally over. Uh, <laughs> the cruel mistress that it was. We are here to talk today about 2020 studs and duds AFC only. Um, we're going to be going through each team talking about guys that surprised us and did well this year. And then guys that let us down. Um, and yeah, it, you can kind of use it to think about who we might like going into next year. Um, but sort of just a recap of the season as we head into the final week before playoffs start. Um, and then I think we got some newsy stuff at the end too. We already got your team set up to, for success. You're already in the playoffs. So it's two weeks. We can kind of goof around a little bit and then we can get serious again in week 14 when we go for titles. There we go. Loves those titles. Stay with us. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go fantasy football sackos. How are we doing, everybody? Let's get into this. Um, I guess before we start, Alex, real quick, I know you're basically eliminated from the playoffs everywhere except for our upcoming podcasters league, which we're doing quite well in. Um, how was your week 12 experience? Was it great? I'm alive in a work league, um, but that's it. So. All my coworkers can suck it now because I'm probably going to win that one because <laughs> why not? Um, no, I'm, I'm glad week 12 is over. We uh, struggled through the Wednesday afternoon football game uh, where the Steelers just couldn't get anything going. Um, uh, what Mike Tomlin said, it was uh, j- basically a J junior varsity level uh, showing by the Steelers. And I believe he said everything sucked. So um Mike Tomlin, very accurate description of his team uh, where they couldn't run the ball. They couldn't stop RG3 and somehow Hollywood Brown shows up for one of his highest scoring outputs of the season against the Steelers with no quarterback. Oh, no quarterback. Don't offend. Do not personally attack Trace McSorley. Okay. Like, let's relax over there with McSorley. with the with the Trace McSorley it sounds like something you'd get it sounds like an ice cream cone you'd get at uh at uh McDonald's the McSwirly. Mm, yummy. All right. Uh week 12 went okay for me. I'm shaping up <laughs> I'm shaping up for uh quite the uh quite the, I don't know, the points showdown is what it's going to come down to. There's like 8 million teams tied at 7 and 6 in our league. So hopefully I can climb atop the points four list. We'll see. Um, let's get yeah, moving we, on we, here. We looked at uh, in that league where I'm, where I'm going to be 2 and 10 or 2 and 11 or whatever my record is. And my average points, if I were to start all my top scores, would be over 130. And I've won two games. So, hey, my team's good. Just uh, didn't win. Uh, Well, welcome to being a Christian McCaffrey manager this year. Boom. Let's do it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be starting with the worst teams in the AFC and working our way towards the best teams in the AFC. The sack daddies. (laughs) And yeah, well, uh, let's just dive in. We're going to start with the New York J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, a whopping 0 and 11 record. They've managed to put together 152 fan or 152 actual points scored so far this season, which is second or which is the last last place, obviously probably the league, but certainly in the conference. Um, they are. Can you guess how many points fewer they've scored than the Kansas City Chiefs so far? Oh, God. Probably like 200. Literally 190, uh, 196 fewer <laughs> oh, points. So, ouch. Fantasy analysis. Quick, quick breaking news from uh, Alex Krog here. Um, it helps to own players on teams that score more points. So that you can score more points in fantasy. So, uh, didn't know if you knew that, Jason. But that's why you probably didn't want to own any Jets this year. Um, it's hilarious to me that like by position, the like best 
Now, I, I know this is relative and I'm kind of making a joke or at least attempting to make a joke. And it probably won't be funny, especially now that I've set it up so poorly. But like the best by position ranking that they have on their entire roster is their defense, which is 27th oh. in fantasy points. Like everybody else is worse than you know, their thirties and lower, which really isn't surprising. I mean, Crowder was hurt. Mims hasn't come on until late. Perriman hasn't come on until late. Um, and Frank Gore slash Le'Veon Bell slash Michael P. Ryan, their quarterback's been a rotating door and so is their kicker to a certain extent. So it's not surprising that all of them suck. Their team sucks. Um, there's really no bright spots, honestly. Yeah. I guess if you're looking at the positional rankings, it's that defense. That's really that that hurts um but <laughs> yeah it's crazy the one person that i like on this team and would consider drafting next year is well besides trevor lawrence because i feel like that's a foregone conclusion um as uh, well, the only way i would draft trevor lawrence next year is if adam gase isn't the coach cuz he's still going to run a crappy offense um but right. I do like Denzel Mims. I feel like Mims is actually a capable receiver. Um, and everybody is wondering what happened to Jamison Crowder. Um, can I just say that Denzel Mims had almost 10 more snaps than Jamison Crowder in week 12? And I don't know if many people will know that, but like Jamison Crowder, for whatever reason, is seeing fewer snaps than Denzel Mims is right now, which I thought was interesting. Um, but Mims is averaging eight targets a week for the last three weeks in a row. They play Vegas, Seattle, and the Rams and Cleveland to finish out the year. They're going to have to throw in every game. Um, so mm -hmm. I think you're looking at five to ten targets a game from Mims. And if he progresses in year two, hopefully he's good in year two. Yeah, he's part of the historic rookie class of wide receivers that it seems like came out this year that I didn't want any part of, which is I was clearly incorrect on, uh, which really sucks for me. But oh, hey, hopefully the listeners didn't listen to me and listen to Jason. Um, I would I would just say that, you know, he's a bright spot going forward. And but there's really not a whole lot else unless they resign Frank Gore next year. Right. Um, is there anybody that you want to stay away <laughs> from? Like, I'm. did you say a everybody did you say that frank gore could be a bright spot can we just can we can i run that back is that yeah that was clearly a joke okay, thank god yeah frank gore is going to be on the bears next year and lead them in rushing <laughs> yards so we can, all, we can look forward to that as fans <laughs> we're gonna sign darnold anyway <laughs> it's like the yeah it's like right yeah bring bring darnold and frank gore over as a package deal for the bears next year oh my really looking forward that's to it. just pathetic Lord. Oh my God. All right. Let's get out. Let's get out of New York. Let's make that pit stop <laughs> as fast as we freaking can. Let's move on to the Jags. It's a bad one. Who are your studs and duds for the Jaguars? I mean, I feel like we should have been on the James Robinson train. I, I mean, was. We I drafted him. We. No, I know. I know that. But like. I saw the Leonard Fournette thing coming. I, I thought whoever their their running back would was would be productive. The reason I thought they were productive ultimately was wrong because I thought that they would be checking the ball down a ton to their running backs, um, whether it was you know Robinson or Fournette or I guess somebody that that is a significant disappointment to me is um, who I'm blanking on. Shark? It's it's the running back from the Redskins that came over, Chris Thompson. Um, oh, yeah. You know, we, we we thought that he would have a, a a pass catching role to start the season, and he hasn't clearly done nothing. Um, and and that was the reason why we thought, at least initially, Fournette was not going to see the amount of catches that he had last year, was because they brought in a receiving back to replace him. And obviously, it's just turned into James. <clears throat> excuse me, the James Robinson show. Um, so. Yeah, it, that's something that I think was somewhat surprising. Uh, it's just that they haven't been checking the ball down as much to the running backs. And and DJ Chark has been remarkably disappointing. Um, when, when you compare him to what he did last year, it's like it doesn't even exist or like compute. If we look at what he did last year, 
I mean, he finished as wide receiver 16 last year. He averaged 12.6 points per game, and he has not even come close to that this year, where I, where I thought he was a sure wide receiver too. Um, I know he's been hurt and dinged up, but um, th- that for me, he is by far and away the biggest disappointment um, on that roster. Yeah, I mean, the, the obvious stud here is James Robinson. Um, complete grips on that backfield. And when you are the Jaguars and your backfield collectively puts up the 19th most fantasy points in order to get some value or worthiness out of players in it, there it you really need to have one person that has a lockdown role. And that's what you have in James Robinson played 97% of snaps in week 12. Um, so if you're going to have wow. a, if you're going to have a lower producing backfield, then you need to have one person in control of it. Soaking in all those points. That is James Robinson, at least in 2020, who knows if they're going to go out and get somebody in the third round. If they did, I really anticipate James Robinson holding onto the role. Um, and being a decent value in 2021, if they draft any running back at all, I don't think people are going to, I think people are going to be afraid to take James Robinson. And I think he'll be there in like the six to eighth rounds. If they draft. No way. If There's no way you could get starting running backs there. You Rojo was going there this year. Like, and four net, like they were all going in that range, all those split guys. And that's when the rookies start going too. was that range. Yeah, like, but they weren't Antonio they Gibson weren't. in them. Yeah, no, uh, you, I'm, I don't know. Maybe J- James Robinson will be a second or third I, round pick for at the worst. I would hope year. that's where I, I mean, that's where I'm going to take him, but I think he's really good. Um, I think he's proven that time and time again this year, even in like minus matchups and he's the only threat he's, you know, he's getting all the work. So as far as duds go, there's two obvious ones. The first one is Gardner Minshew, who I believe is healthy enough to play and is still not playing at this point. Um, Which, you know, Yikes. What a letdown season. I mean, I think you touted him as like a top 12 quarterback coming into the year. I don't know a lot of people that did because he kind of finished strong and they ran me down and have to throw and he just didn't have the year, honestly. And now I kind of feel like that they might just be in tank mode anyway um, at this point. And maybe that's part of the reason why they're holding him out. Just say, screw it get fully healthy and come back next year. Um, And then, like you said, the other obvious choice is DJ Chark. I mean, the injury riddledness playing with Minshew, who has half of a thumb for a month, just really did him in. And I think that he's going to be a value next year, honestly, because of how he played this season when he was on. Yeah, When he was on, he was on. I mean, he put up more than 20 points in two games and was, you know, and had double digit targets in multiple games. So just really unfortunate, but is what it is. So studs and duds for the Jags. Yeah. Gar- Gardner Minshew being quarterback 19 last year. I, I think we forget he threw for 21 touchdowns, only had six picks and he rushed for 344 yards last year. Yeah. Like, it, and then all of a sudden he's just relegated to backup role and didn't have it this year. The magic apparently dried up and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible, honestly, that he went from where he did last year as a sixth or seventh round pick to, I mean, losing your job. <laughs> Hilarious that Mitchell Trubisky replaced Mike Glennon who now replaces Mitchell Trubit or who now replaces uh, Garner Minshew, who replaced Nick Foles, who replaced Mitch Trubisky. So yeah. like what a colossal cluster bomb between those two teams of just greatness, terrible quarterback play. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave it there. Our next team in the AFC is the two and eight Cincinnati Bengals who um, quickly saw their season go away. Um, any hope of even getting a few more wins, I think went out the door when Joe Burrow had his knee explode. Um, the, I was, my stud was probably Burrow and T Higgins 
and Boyd wasn't really, I don't know. He was, he was good. Don't get me wrong, but he wasn't a wide receiver one. Um, and T Higgins was actually better on a per game basis when he actually started playing, than he was putting up more points than Boyd was miraculously, honestly. Um, but I think T Higgins is a stud. I think yep. that AJ green is gone. The duds are obviously Joe Mixon is the obvious stud there. Um, I mean, the guy was in a split role and got hurt and is on IR. It hasn't played since week six, like just another rough year for Joe Mixon. Uh, he's going to return from IR week 14 against the boys, but you got to think, you know, unless he has a miraculous end to the season, you got to think that he's going to be like a late third pick, maybe fourth round pick um, going into next season. The thing that I'm worried about really, though, is the timeline for Joe Burrow to get back to full health in time for the beginning of next season. Granted that he got hurt in the end of November. Um, can I, I, so I just on Joe Mixon, cause I, I have him in multiple leagues. Um, and I, I actually thought there would be big things for him this year after a, a signing a new contract, um, be having an upgrading quarterback from Dalton to, to Burrow, um, and just having there be more skill position players around him where I thought Joe Mixon would be better. So, you know, we take a quick step back here. Joe Mixon last year was running back 13 in half PPR leagues. Um, and so me being a, a projector and somewhat analytic on this is, Hey, he was running back 13. He'll probably be thereabouts, maybe a little bit higher if with better talent. Um, so last year he averaged 13 points a game, um, to be running back 13, like, Okay, so that that's fine. When when he played this year, he averaged 14.9 points a game. So like that that's 2 points more a week. Um and I'm just saying like if you were to compare that to last year, um that puts him at running back 10. So I'm I'm not giving up on on Mixon. I th- I think he got hurt. Obviously, he had that huge game. He started out a little bit slow. He has the contract. I would expect him to be back in full effect next year and in a, and a really good value in a, in an offense that I think is going to be moving the ball with Burrow and Higgins and Boyd and Mixon. That's a hell of a hell of a little. Um, core that they have there that's locked up for the foreseeable future. Um, they just need to get some offensive linemen and I mean, look out a little bit of for, for that Bengals offense. Yeah. I mean, they absolutely need to get some offensive linemen. Hopefully they sign Trent Williams. Who's a free agent at the end of the season. Um, as far as Mixon's performance this year goes, I mean, he had single digit performances in two out of the first three weeks. He had that week four explosion against the Jaguars where he put up almost 40. If you take that out, he only averages 10 points a week for the rest of his games. So I don't want to lean too far towards. Yeah, but you can you can mix and match numbers however you want. You can do that with Aaron Jones. Like, if, of course, you can take out the high week if you want to, but the high week still happened and you were obviously playing him against Jacksonville if you drafted him. So it's not like that doesn't count. Um, and, and probably won quite a few people their weeks that True. week that it was like, Oh, here we go. Joe Mixon's here. And you know, you know, af- after a 40 point week following it up with 13 and 14 points, um, you know, it, he seemed to have a nice little four there. He had a bunch of catches, um, even though I know Giovanni, uh, Bernard was playing. Um, so like, I, I still think that he's their sole workhorse going forward, even with Bernard there, he's just a change of pace back. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to line up and take Mixon again next year, just cause I think the upsides. There. Yeah. And Bernard is still also under contract, um, next season as well. So he's not going anywhere, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I would probably say. Yeah. I he went early second, I think, or late first in a lot of drafts this year. I would say probably late second, third, kind of where you got James Conner this season is where I think about you might be able to get him. Yeah, I agree. Um 
<sighs> so to move him down, but I mean, only marginally to a high end RB two, just you're, you know, you can, you always get a discount on somebody that got injured and missed significant time the season before. Plus there's not going to be burrow there to move the offense as much. I think at least yep. at the beginning of the season. All right. Next up we have the, Oh, he'll be back week one. You think he plays? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next up, we have the chargers who are three and eight. Everything. I don't know if everything that could go wrong has go wrong for the chargers. They had some significant injuries uh, on the defensive side of the ball. They haven't really been able to play defense. um, At least not very well. Um, They've honestly given up the fourth most points scored in the AFC. So they're playing in a lot of high scoring games. They just can't pull off the dub. And Herbert's been a, vi- a revelation Screen for fantasy. Oh, yeah. Shootouts every game. Um, I want Keenan Allen to be my stud, but I can't go with him just because I got to go with the rookie. I think it's, I think Herbert's the offensive rookie of the year. Like by a, I would say it over James Robinson, but I, I don't even know if I would call it a thin margin either. Like I think Herbert is phenomenal. I think he's going to be around for a long time. He'd be a really good player for a long time. So he's my stud, my dud on the chargers. If you want to call Eckler a dud for getting hurt, I get it. I absolutely do. Um, he, you know, he, he would qualify. So would Mike Williams, but I'm actually, I'm going to go with Josh Kelly because Josh Kelly had the opportunity to seize that backfield multiple, multiple, multiple weeks after multiple, multiple, multiple injuries. And they signed guys off of the street in street clothes, a la Kalen Balaj, and turn him into a workhorse or Troy, Mo- Troy Main Pope for a week. So Josh Kelly ain't it. It sucks. Um, but it is what it is. He's my dud for the Chargers. What do you got? Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of this offense and it sucks because we discounted them so much because of Tyrod Taylor's uh in ineptitude of yeah. um what he's done in historically with with wide receivers and basically said that the only people that should be rostered on this team is A Austin Eckler and Hunter Henry. Um, because he he's proven to support. Well, obviously you're gonna you're gonna have Keenan Allen on your team if he falls far enough, but you're not like actively going out and getting him. Um, I mean, Keenan Allen's been outstanding. Uh, he's gonna be a top five wide receiver going forward um, as long as Herbert is his quarterback and continues to light him up with all the targets that he's been getting. Um, so I mean I, I think you've covered covered it relatively well. Hunter Henry Hunter Henry easy for me to say. It's kind of flown under the radar a little bit with tight end 8 so far this year. Um which is, you know, serviceable. It's not not a rock star, but when you're averaging 8 8.4 points a week and you know the last 3 weeks as you're getting ready to go in the playoffs has been 11, 12 and 10 um with uh over six targets uh what five of the last six weeks like that's pretty good from a tight end spot so um i i feel like he's been quietly flying under the radar but it's probably because he only has three touchdowns um if if he had like six to seven touchdowns or eight touchdowns then you're looking at a at a top six tight end potentially going forward um and i wouldn't be surprised to see him potentially be that um kind of kind of bumping on the tight end one door um again i look at tight ends one through six as being t t end ones and and seven through twelve is as twos um i would not surprise to see him be close to that tight end one level next year yeah absolutely not um uh, austin eckler is averaging 14 and a half fantasy points a game i think the guy is a freaking stud man i just he had 11 catches for 85 yards like that. He absolutely cut into Keenan Allen's workload in his return, um, which is a little unfortunate, but I think he could be a top. I hope I'm just, what I'm trying to get at is the guy is a stud when he's healthy and he plays. I just hope that in the drafts that I'm in next year, he's there in the second round because he is a running back yep. one surefire running back one when healthy and i think you could hopefully get him for a running back two price point and get him in the second round 
uh, next season, but we'll see. All right. If if he's going to have, he's already had 11 catches, multiple games, and he's only played in five games. So, um, especially in a PPR, like if, if you look at him, he's probably a top, he could potentially be a top five pick. Um, if he stayed healthy, that's, that's his ceiling. Um, the only way with he all gets those catches, the only way he gets drafted there is if all of the fantasy talking heads talk him up the entire off season, because I feel like the casual fantasy fan isn't going to want right. to pay. No, I agree. Pay that. So he, I think right now if the draft tomorrow, he's available in the second, like slate second round probably, but all right, let's move on to Denver. The Broncos are a whopping four and seven. Um, they've struggled with the injury bug. They've struggled with the COVID exposure bug. Uh, they've played a football game without any quarterbacks. Um, sorry, Mr. What Hinton. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. It is, a, it is what it is. Not much I can do about that. Sorry, Mr. Hinton. Um, I mean, you know, off the bat, you lose Cortland Sutton to start your year. Drew Locke goes out and gets hurt, and then they all get COVID. Philip Lindsay's in and out with injury. Um, <laughs> just Noah Fant can't stay healthy. Like they, they just haven't been able. They have not been able to stay healthy this season, between COVID or otherwise, and so. Other than Melvin Gordon, I mean, Melvin Gordon's probably my stud on that team and he's running back 22. So I don't, I'm not super thrilled about it. Um, I mean, as far as what the Denver Broncos are able to do right now, the Broncos receivers as a collective group are putting up the 20th most fantasy points and the Broncos running backs are putting up the 23rd most fantasy fantasy points. So it's just not, it's not an inspiring offense. They just, they were hurt and they paid the price. My dud is everybody that got hurt. Cortland Sutton. There you yeah, go. And I would just say that that's, that's an offense that I'm probably going to stay away from next year, just because it's one of those things where until they prove it, you don't really want anybody on the team. Um, we, we thought Sutton would, would have a big year, um, with what he showed at the end of last year. And obviously he got hurt or, you know, he hurt his shoulder and then his stock price dropped and then he tore his ACL or whatever happened to him. Um, and it just sucks. Um, when, when people were expecting a big year out of him, uh, obviously everybody thought Noah Fant would be, um, you know, taking that next step, uh, be Kittle, potentially Kittle-esque. Um, with with his peripheral numbers the first first year and uh, that hasn't happened either I, I do want to point out though you, you bring up Kendall Hinton um, he's currently the uh, the worst fantasy player this year um, his cumulative total is negative 2.78 points um, which puts him nice. in dead last um, there are th- there are three other players um, there was I didn't say anything. Um, there there are three other players that um, have negative points. Um, they consist of Robert Griffin the third, um, who uh, I think is actually going to be positive after today um, with his four <laughs> points. So you can take him off the list. So there's actually only two people. Uh, one is Dante Pettis, who is negative one point three six points. Um, he lost a fumble in week eight against Seattle and has not played since. Um, and Tim Boyle, the backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, who gets put in to take kneel down so Rodgers doesn't lose uh, rushing yardage. Uh, Tim Boyle uh, has taken uh, six kneel downs or he's lost six yards on like eight kneel downs. So you're welcome for that. Um I have nothing to add about the Broncos. They've been a crap show. Um, I, I do wish that Philip Lindsay um, would get more run, but it seems like whenever he gets more run, he ends up dinged up a little bit, which is unfortunate. Um, I just, uh, it, it sucks because, you know, he's coming off of back to back thousand yard seasons. We talked about, you know, him hopefully being the back and, and limiting um, the value of Melvin Gordon. And I think that has happened when they've both played. Um, and so because of that, you just kind of want to stay away from both of them. Yep. I think uh, on a, as an aside, 
one thing I learned this season is don't draft injured players. I paid for it and I yeah. l- dropped a couple early games in the season because I was holding Cortland Sutton and Debo Samuel through some injuries. Uh, and then now I'm paying for it at the end of the season. It's going to be a point race to see if I make it. Um, guys that I drafted Cortland Sutton over include Antonio Gibson, um, Terry McLaurin, Darren Waller's in this group. David Montgomery's in this group. Like some really bad, bad choices there. Debo, I took ahead of Deontay Johnson, um, which is just gross. So draft healthy players, win games early, and pick up sleepers as you go. Like I, I don't know. This, this is it was bad. I'm not going to draft unhealthy players next yeah, year. Yeah, I think I, I, I think you can you can take people that are hurt. But I think you can only afford to take one of them, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I think we both kind of got aggressive in the same fashion where, you know, we were targeting Debo because his value, you know, he was going so late and we're like, I mean, look at his peripherals when he comes back. He's probably a wide receiver one, which I mean, he still could be um, a wide receiver one the rest of the way now that he's back healthy. Yeah, but um, it's week 13. Or, you know, <laughs> Right. No, I know. Like, that's that's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we were thinking could still end up happening, but it's just really late in the game and you're probably out of it. If you, you know, if if you are a Debo owner, if you are a Kenny Galladay owner, um, if you are, um, you know, somebody similar to, to those type of players where it's like, hey, these guys are going to be great once they come back and they just never got healthy. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's going to bring us to our next team. That is the Houston Texans. And what a dumpster fire of a season it was from the beginning with Bill O'Brien in control. Um, <laughs> the stud is Deshaun Watson. He's a quarterback one. Doesn't matter who the coach is. Doesn't matter if he has D hop or not. I think he's a quarterback one. Doesn't matter the matchup. The guy can throw it on anybody. Um, I, I was absolutely wrong about Deshaun Watson this year. Um, I thought Deshaun made a big difference and Deshaun, or I'm sorry. I thought Deandre made a big difference. He didn't. So props to Deshaun Watson. He's my stud. My dud is Will Fuller because somebody who has a career average of only playing in 10, 10 and a half games a season. And I think we might've even had a board bet. I know we talked about at the beginning of the year, as far as over under how many games he was going to play. And I think I took the under 10. I think we both smashed the under. So I don't think there was a bet, (laughs) but um, (laughs) he finds a way to get back onto the field after a hamstring injury only to get suspended for the methods that he took to get back on the field. And now we'll be missing the first week of next season as well. Um, which is unfortunate. So Will Fuller feel bad for you. Yeah, Really damning kind of. for Will Fuller owners really sucks. Wide receiver five, just He's lighting the world on fire. Free agent too. So like he could be gone. Yeah. I mean, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson's already come out and said like, we, Hey guys, we need to resign him. Um, clearly the talents there. Um, the body has, continually let him down. And then the things he was ingesting in the body also let him down. Um, I, I think for, for me, I I think David Johnson has been a little bit disappointing. Um, only for the fact that i like our league as an example, drafted after the Thursday night game where, you know, he looked healthy and showed up and he had that touchdown and had 18, 18 fantasy points week one against Kansas city. And he has not scored more than that since uh, wow. he only has three rushing touchdowns on the year. One of them was the first week. Um, he did have a receiving touchdown against green Bay, um, which was, a slaughter. Um, so that was all like whatever. Um, so for, for me, he's been, he's been kind of the disappointing guy where, it, you know, um, even like the Carlos hides of the world last year in that offense cranked out a thousand yards because that was their offense. And I know it's changed a little bit since Bill O'Brien's not there and they've been airing it out. Um, but I, I thought that, you know, the combination between like the Johnson brothers, um, 
Yahoo. Um, they would not be like the between the two of them. I thought they would be highly productive with the way that Duke Johnson would be used out of the backfield and David Johnson with receptions. And it just hasn't really been there. You, you saw what Duke Johnson could do in, on Thanksgiving where they were throwing downfield with him and kind of using him as, as like a gadget player. And I was expecting more of that all year and it hasn't really happened. Um, so just in general, I, I've been disappointed with the with the Texans uh, um, backfield. Yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I'm with you on the te- the Texans backfield. I mean, they're the real letdown, if we're being honest, like Will Fuller was wide receiver five. It's just more of a disappointment in him being suspended uh, to end the season. Um, Johnson and Johnson um, is absolutely <laughs> the uh, the letdown of the year for them. But I just hope that they don't make the rest of the team suffer in uh extend Romeo Cornell, but we'll see if that happens. Moving on. Next up, we have the new England Patriots studs and duds. Uh, man, is there a fantasy stud on this team? I don't know. I mean, Edelman got hurt. Cam was a stud to start the year. Then he got COVID and he was never the same. Damian Harris has been consistent, but I mean, Burkhead also looked good, but then he got hurt. I don't, I don't know if I have a stud for the New England Patriots. If I'm being completely honest with you, um, no, it's it, they've been they've been remarkably mediocre. Um, yeah. where you know somebody will jump out for a game. Um, I had the I had the Cam Newton Julian Edelman combination the one week that it mattered against against Seattle, where they kind of went off and and put it together. Um, but I mean that was. 12 weeks as week two, you know, like they, th- their offense just as a whole hasn't really done it for me. Um, we, we didn't really know what it was going to look like. They've been serviceable, but there's just like, yeah, it's just a whole bunch of blah. I mean, I'm looking in our league right now, James White's roster, Jacoby Myers, roster, Damien Harris, their defense obviously did not come back and perform the same way that it did last year. They got, they got destroyed by people leaving and, and different things like that. And they just weren't going to be as good as they were in the prior year. So yeah, there's just a, there's not a ton to love here. No. And I don't think that there's, there's any, I don't think there's any single person that I'm targeting um, on the Patriots going into next season. Um yeah, Which maybe is, Damien Harris late. Yeah, that's that's if, the if only Cam's guy. Not gonna, if if Cam's not going to be there, just to have the goal line touches, yeah, um, like maybe that makes sense. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I mean, even with Michelle back, Harris was still the guy there. Cam Newton is an unrestricted free agent next year, so who knows if he'll be back? They didn't do themselves any favor with their quarterback room going into the season and cam got COVID and cam wasn't the same after. So moving on next up, we have the Las Vegas Raiders who are currently sitting at six and five. Um, Great offense scoring 292 points so far this season, which is one, two, three, four, five, sixth in the AFC. However, that defense is giving up the third most points in the AFC. So it's just still problems on the defensive side of the ball for the Raiders. The stud, I think, I mean, I'm, I think you have to go. I think you have to go with, uh, you really can't go wrong. Like you could go Darren Waller, who's currently tight end two, but everybody knew is going to be in the top three. Uh, or, and Josh Jacobs yeah. is five top five or Josh Jacobs is currently running back six. I pegged him as a top five potential guy that you could get in the second round. I was right, but now he's hurt. The ultimate draft value, the ultimate draft value. You wrote an article because he gave me so much excitement for this season, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Either one of those guys. Waller, we had it. I I believe we had Waller at at tight end five behind uh, Kittle. Uh, Kelsey Ertz and I believe Andrews. Um, you even had Andrews over over Waller. Um, so yeah, I mean, t- tight end two is 
great. Um, very extremely serviceable. And I, I think he's top three going forward um, where he kind of slots into that Zach Ertz floor um, going forward that we thought was there. Okay. So he is tight end two. We are through 12 weeks of scoring without looking out of those 11 games, because there is a buy out of the 11 games. How many weeks do you think tight end two scored double digit points? Um, five. He only put up double digit points in six games out of 11 <sighs> single digit points in five games from your tight end two. So, Travis Kelsey's the only tight end that matters. Him and George Kittle and nobody else for me. Like, there is not enough coming from Darren Waller for me to jump and get him in the top four rounds next season. There's not enough. I, I like, it's Travis Kelsey or Bust, really. And I think you could argue to draft Kelsey in the first round easily. But. Yeah, Kelsey has uh, what four? Uh, we'll get into it, but he's got four weeks of over twenty and only two weeks in single digits. So I mean, that'll bananas single digits. Yeah, that'll that'll tell you all you need to know about that. Um, My, yeah, I mean, I, duds. the the Raiders. Um, I mean, pretty much any of their wide receivers. That's what I was um, going to say. We, any of them, pick one. Yeah, there. The, it just hasn't been there. Um, so. Uh, Ruggs has been a disappointment. Um, you know, they took him early. He's probably been the worst of the best um, wide receivers that were drafted early. Um, he, he's shown the least amount of um, potential. I mean, he's he's shown a couple catches um, here and there, and I'm sure our Raiders correspondent uh, will weigh in uh, hopefully and, and get back to us. But I uh, I think hi Gabriel. Um, I uh, I just don't know if. Um, I just don't know like what they're looking at going forward is, is Derek Carr really the quarterback of the future? Are they going to tear that down and start over at quarterback? Um, it's uh, uh, yeah. All of their wide receivers. They're the, they're the duds. Yep. There's been nobody. Absolutely. Next up, we have the Baltimore Ravens surprise. We're talking about them in front of some of these other teams, but that's life as a six and four Baltimore Ravens team studs. I don't know. Uh, on offense, I think the person with the most ability to be a stud over the final four weeks of the season are here. Here we go again. It's it's JK Dobbins and Lamar. Those are the only two. <laughs> no, 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 those are the only two p- people that even have the potential to be a stud right now. I would say that there are none. I would say that there are no, no studs right now. And and Mark Andrews, who you got to hope catches a, a touchdown to be fantasy relevant in a given week. But like for next season, I would Lamar's a middle of the pack quarterback who I mean, he didn't return to form nearly at all. As far as passing went, the running is what's giving him a floor, but it's also cannibalizing the running backs. And they're putting in three different running backs at a time. Thank God. Mark Ingram's contract is expiring. Um, So I don't, I mean, Mark Ingram won't be back. So it's really just Gus bus and JK Dobbins. Dobbins, I think is fever. Dobbins. You want to see him take over for the last few games. Lamar has a chance to be good. Their schedule is easy peasy. I mean, cover girl. Easy peasy cover girl. Um, I I do think that, um, you know, from a passing perspective, Lamar Jackson has not been all that different from a yardage standpoint. He just, no touchdowns. They're just, not, they're just not scoring touchdowns. No. You know, like whether it's on the ground or whether it's in the air. Uh, again, he had 36 passing touchdowns last year. This show only has 15, um, same amount of interceptions. Um, yards per game passing. He's throwing 14 less yards a game. Like there's, there's not like a tangible difference, but in the passing game, um, they're just not scoring, which, which is kind of, yeah, they're just not, they're not scoring touchdowns. Um, they're, they're not moving the ball on the ground as well as they did last year um, with Lamar's legs. Um, he's been sacked more this year than he was last year already. 
I, you know, defenses went in. Um, they saw what what the Tennessee Titans did to them last year, and everybody's adopted it, and they have not figured out how to um, kind of figure out how to how to stop what the defense is doing to them. Uh, they did figure it out a little bit against the Steelers today on the ground, where they were kind of running some power, um, some power. Um, like sweeps to the outside and pulling guards. Um, so maybe you see them try to run to the edges more because um, they, they're a very throw to the center of the field. They're a run center of the field um, and maybe try to get to the edge more with with some of their speed guys um, to try to prevent teams from packing the middle of the field, spread them out, and then you can take advantage going up the middle like they want to. Um, you know, they have a really good schedule coming up. Um, maybe, maybe they figured some things out against the Steelers today, but, um, yeah, they, they've been a colossal disappointment based on what they did last year that, um, those rushing yards for Lamar just aren't there. I mean, he's a top 10 quarterback in fantasy, but, um, that's, uh, not where people were drafting him, uh, were, was expecting him to be. They were expecting a top, top three, top two performance. Yep. I'm with you all the way there. Moving on, next up we have the Miami Dolphins who are sitting at seven and four. Um, looking at being a playoff team, if you can imagine. Um, my stud for the Dolphins, Devontae's had an okay year. I mean, in half PPR scoring, he's currently wide receiver 29. That's that's below where people drafted him. So you could argue for him to be a dud. Um, I think the real stud is pretty obvious there, and it it is Miles Gaskin. Um, I think it's pretty clear cut. He was, he was the guy all season. Nobody wanted to pick him up, but you know, it took a couple of weeks there of him having, you know, 10 rushing attempts and like four to five catches before people even started giving him the respect of adding him to the ends of benches. Um, but I don't know if they're going to draft a running back next year or, or not. If they don't, then I, think and this coaching staff is still there which i, I mean I, th- I have every reason to believe that they will be if they don't draft yeah. a running back in the top four rounds i think miles gaskin is an every down running back next season and i would pick him in the first four rounds probably three and a half um Doug, yeah, he's a potential zero rb target right where you can oh get a little my later God, he would be a huge zero rb and if you like if you went if you went kelsey first round and grabbed like even if it's Tyreek or Keenan or somebody or whoever and I he's yeah. a great zero RB target Miles Gaskin yep. um, my dud is Tua Tua hasn't done anything since he started okay uh, the the stud for me is very obvious it's their defense um, okay I, I hey uh, defense matters um, I, I was on it early um, they've only had two duds of a of a game. The first one was again, well, three really. Um, New England the first week where they got kind of sideswiped by Cam and didn't really know what was coming in that in that offense. I would expect them to destroy them in Week 15. Um, Buffalo who has an explosive offense and Seattle who has an explosive offense. Other than that, they've been really great. Um, they've what they're 11 games in this season. They have 11 interceptions, seven fumble recoveries, 25 sacks. Three defensive touchdowns. Um, they're currently defense three in, in our league. Uh, everybody has different defense settings. Um, but yeah, they've they've been the clear, clear stud. Um, and they've they've been really great. Um, I would expect them to continue to get better next year. Um, in somewhat of a of a crappy um crappy division. While and, you're talking about them. Yeah. They play Kansas City week 14 at home. Are you playing them week 14 against Kansas City? Or are you going to search the waiver wire just because of no, Pat you, Mahomes? Yeah, you cannot. You cannot play them against the Kansas City defense. Like who or sorry, Kansas City offense. Whoever's playing the Kansas City offense, their defensive projection ranking should be last period. Like whoever's playing Kansas City should not be started. End of story. I agree. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see who people end up streaming. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. And I like, again, I, I want to see their like when their offenses gets good. Cause I, I think they have a really smart general manager. I, I love Flores, their coach. 
Um, I, I just love the way that they do things down there. It's very smart. Um, it's very um, pointed and intentional the way that they're building that roster and it's through the defense. And I hope they don't end up in Chicago Bears hell where they have a good defense and they can't find a quarterback. Um, that's that's what I'm worried about for that team is, hey, we got the defense. We got the rookie quarterback on the cheap deal. That's traditionally been the the um, kind of recipe for winning a Super Bowl. Um, but if two is not the guy, then you're stuck, just like the Bears were with Trubisky. So that's as much as they said it wasn't to try to find out if if Tua is good, because otherwise they'll take another quarterback next year. That is obviously what they were doing um, because they have the Texans first round pick. And if they don't think Tua has it, then they're going to go and draft somebody else because unless you have a quarterback, look at what Arizona did. They they took Sam Rosen and they were like, this dude doesn't have it. And so they went and took Kyler Murray and traded him. Like there, there's no doubt in my mind that the Dolphins would would do the same thing. Yeah, I, I think you mean Josh Rosen, but yeah, absolutely. Um, Sorry. Yeah, Sam Rosen's an announcer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm with you. Um, let's move on to the Colts, shall we? Also sitting at seven and four. Um, I mean, I feel like their obvious stud is if you want to talk defense, their defense is currently number two in the league um, right now in fantasy. They got housed by Tennessee this week, gave up their first negative point game of the season. Um, but they're looking at a, I would say, yeah, they had, they had COVID yeah. and stuff going on with people not playing outside of that. I mean, I think for, I want to, the obvious stud is T Y Hilton. I, I guess. I mean, he's wide receiver. Correct. He's wide receiver 73. As much as I want to say Jonathan Taylor's a dud and he is running back 21. He just didn't live up to the hype, at least in his first year. But yeah, T.Y. Hilton, wide receiver 73. We told you guys to stay away from him going into the season. Hopefully you listened. And yeah, I mean, there you go. I, I did not a whole lot to add there for me. Yeah, I uh, I will be keeping my eye on what this running back situation looks like next year. Um, I, I don't know what happens with Marlon Mack. I don't know what happens with Naheem Hines. I don't know what happens with Jordan Wilkins. Jonathan Taylor is still going to be there. Um, if they're going to continue to ride the hot hand, then it's probably a stay away going forward. Um, unless there's more of a clearly defined role somehow set out. Um, you know, split backfields are are really tough to find to get an RB one out of. The Browns are probably one of the exceptions to that, where Chubb will probably be a, a top twelve back with Hunt being there. Um, but you know, we talked about before the season where when they were both healthy and both playing, that Chubb wasn't an RB one. So um, in a in a kind of a muddled backfield like this, it's uh, they'll be okay. They won't get you what you're hoping um, the talent kind of bears out. So I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, it sucks that um, somebody like a Paris Campbell got hurt, who I, I knew you were high on. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. has kind of um, carved out a nice little role for himself, but it hasn't been like show stopping great um, other than the the one week against Tennessee. Um, yeah, I, I won't bring up their kicker. So you're ah, Rodrigo. What I will say is for Jonathan Taylor, he had a 67% snap share in week two. No other week in the season has he had a snap share higher than 60%. So not afraid to spread the ball around. That's not enough. No, it's not. It, it's enough to be an RB2 is what it is. Um, as for Michael Pittman Jr., he had an 86% snap share in Tennessee uh, part dose. Uh, didn't work out how the first installment did with seven catches for a hundred yards. Um, however, in the second round he did in the second bout with Tennessee, he stood, he did still manage nine targets. So the volumes there, he just was only able to convert it into two for 28. So the volume was still there. He was just inefficient with his targets. Hopefully he's able to convert more against Houston in week 13 and in through the playoffs. Um, I think he's going to be a great year to breakout candidate that people are going to get at a crazy discount. I, you know, should he continue to start over Paris Campbell, which I think he will. And if T Y is even there next year. Yep. Um, all right, moving on next up, we have the Tennessee Titans 
Their stud is Derrick Henry. Um, their dud is probably a combination of Johnny Smith, who started out on fire and cooled off since, and also AJ Brown just for sure being did. injured and slow out of the gates. So that's what I would say for that. Um, Derrick Henry is going to win people leagues. Hopefully you have Derrick Henry. He's going to win you leagues. He's going to, I think, run away with the, the total yards <laughs> from scrimmage. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really got a whole lot. Yeah, and, I mean, it's obvious, shows. right? I, I, yeah, there was a Twitter poll um, about who was going to end up with the most touchdowns. I think Tyreek has 14 and Derrick Henry has 12 currently. And I think we both think that Henry's probably going to finish the year with a run. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets to 20. Um crazy the, the way that he's been blistering and the and and how good his matchups are and how good he's been the last couple of weeks um the um yeah i just, the i want them to be so much better like aj yeah. brown don't get me wrong he's great um he's really great but he's he's basically the same thing as last year where He's going to have, he's going to settle somewhere right around like a hundred targets or just under. Uh, I know he missed a couple games. Um, he just doesn't like if he, if he got to 120 targets, the dude is just a freaking beast. Um, but we, we said this coming into the season where if he gets the opportunity and gets the targets, he's a wide receiver one. If he doesn't get those targets, then he's a wide receiver too. He's currently wide receiver 19. He did miss two games, which he would have lit up. But um, yeah, he just he just isn't getting the ball enough. But he's My, super productive with the, when he does get the ball. I mean, yeah. he, 40, 40 receptions this year, eight touchdowns. Like, again, it's very similar to last year. He's scoring every five times he touches the ball. Give him the ball. Yeah. Well, Mike Frabel is not a pass first guy. I mean, they're going to hammer you. The Titans receivers are only 18th in fantasy point output right now. Their running back room is fifth in running back fantasy points. So their run first team, Derrick Henry makes that offense go and he's going to win people leagues this year. And I think PPR or not, I think he's a top six back moving forward unquestioned. Um, so <sighs> yeah, what, what last year, AJ Brown, and this is only his second year. I mean, he's going to be phenomenal, uh, for years to come, but last year yards per target, 12.5 this year, 9.8, um, which is good. He had eight touchdowns last year is eight touchdowns this year already. 52 catches last year, 40 this year. Like it's just not, it's not enough, but God, I wish it, I wish it would be more. <laughs> All right, next up, we have the Buffalo Bills also sitting at eight and three. Um, I mean, I think this could potentially be straightforward. Um, for me, the stud is Stefan Diggs. Uh, I'm going to actually go with him over Josh Allen. Yeah. Josh no Allen. Doubt. Josh Allen was predicted to be a top 10 quarterback just because of his rushing yards. I don't really think anybody had Stefan Diggs in their top 10. And right now he is wide receiver eight on the season. So I'm going to go Diggs, uh double digit fantasy points every week, except for two. And the guy is a monster. So uh dark horse of the year. I, I don't know. I, uh, that's probably my dark horse guy. It would be Diggs for this season. Everybody else that came out of nowhere, we kind of, th- thought that they could or said it was for this reason, but then that reason went away like Tyrod Taylor because of his lung for Keenan Allen. Um, and then my dud. Go yeah. Ahead. My no, dud is their running back it's, room. It's, it's not, I mean, Diggs is, Diggs is good, but it's, it's not Diggs. It's either James Robinson or it's uh, your guy on That's the Washington true. football team, Antonio Gibson yeah. as the, as, as the people that have kind of come out of nowhere, but from like a, like th- those happen every year, but like, you know, somebody that was thought highly enough to be going in round five, round six, maybe Popping an occasional up. round four at the start of the season to end up being a, 
yeah, to, to end up being a wide receiver one, um, you know, you'll, you'll hit those dart throws every once in a while with some running backs. Um, but to have a wide receiver go that late to end up, you know, being a, a pure wide receiver one, um, is, uh, something that makes some sense because who else are they going to throw the ball to? Um, and the answer is Cole Beasley, um, who somehow is a borderline a wide receiver two this year. Um, I mean, wide receiver 26, Cole freaking Beasley. Like what? Like that, that to me is super surprising where, you know, I don't, I don't even think he was getting drafted. And to, to end up being a wide receiver too is is very surprising. Sorry, I cut you off of of hating everybody that has to run the ball. That's not Josh Allen. <laughs> no, um, let the I, hate let the hate commence. We could we could talk about these wide receivers. I mean, these Bills wide receivers are fourth in scoring fantasy point wise. There are only three teams ahead of the Buffalo Bills in fantasy point output at the receiver position. And those are the Seahawks, Steelers and Chiefs. And I don't really know if anybody saw that coming based on how well Mm. Josh Allen can throw the ball. I think he really proved or how well Josh Allen can run the ball. I think he really proved that he can throw the ball this season. Um, Hopefully that continues into the future. But them Buffalo Bills running backs, baby, 29th in fantasy output nobody has taken the reins been able to stay healthy take the rain uh, it's it's a combination of zach moss and devin singletary are my dads and i i don't see that the roles really changing next year either so kind of out on them yeah i will be really interested to see um kind of my last point on the bills here is is how they finish the season because we, we talked about how sh- just shitty their schedule is the rest of the way at san francisco pittsburgh at denver at new england and then miami week 17 um the, that is a rough five pack stretch to kind of wrap the season up with um i mean so we'll we'll see where they end up um but I, I just would not be surprised to see them struggle a little bit um but who knows they've been really great all year yeah all right, moving on, shall we? Uh, we got three teams left. We are going to now move to the Cleveland Browns. If you would have told me that they would be the third to the last team that we would talk about because of their eight and three record, I would have been nuts. That would have been, but neither here nor there. Uh, Cleveland, I, I don't know. Their stud is whoever the running back is, if I'm being quite honest. Like, that's. That's the only person that I really want on that team. The Browns are fourth in running back scoring. Um, They had Chubb in and out with injury. Uh, Their dud is, I mean, it's obviously Odell who got hurt. So I don't know how much of a dud he was before that. It was probably Landry while Odell was hanging around. Um, And Baker Mayfield. I don't think has been really impressive at all this season. So I don't know. I'm surprised that they have an eight and three record and I don't think, I think they're going to end up closer to 500 over the stretch, the final stretch, but we'll see. Yeah. Real, real life. Right. I mean, Hey, they're eight and three. Congratulations. Um, but they're 11th in points in the AFC. Um, yeah. Like that's, they, they have a net, like, they have a net negative 21 points um, from like they've scored 21 points less than all their opponents for the year. Um, I just uh, like, there's not a lot to talk about here unless you have hunt when Chubb was hurt. And now that Chubb's back, like he'll be good. Um, Austin Hooper hasn't done much. None of the wide receivers have done much. Baker's been a spot start here or there. They're just not a fantasy juggernaut which is kind of strange for a third place team in a in a conference um you know we've talked about several teams that we'd much rather have over them the titans i'd rather have um the bills the steelers are coming up um the chargers i'd rather have some texans i'd rather have um there's just not i don't know they're the browns and they're not super fantasy relevant no it's Nick Chubb and everybody they also else. Had really crappy. They, they also had really crappy weather for a couple of weeks where, sure. you know, 
they, they weren't throwing the ball and we're throwing, we're playing in really low scoring games. So, you know, maybe that's a qualifier, but that's something to take into advantage or take into account when you are picking Browns players is, you know, playing right next to Lake Erie and getting Lake effect snow and having there be potentially crappy weather. Um, you know, that's not really who you want to be starting um, in fantasy playoff matchups um, with uh, with potential outdoor inclement weather, which they've experienced multiple times. There you go. All right, let's move on, shall we? Some more exciting teams. Our final two. First up, we have the Kansas City Chiefs sitting at. 10 and one through 12 weeks. Uh, the Kansas city chiefs, I mean, they're studs. You can pick one. Um, I'm going to sit and <laughs> have, have a minute to talk to you about Tyree kill, who is currently wide receiver one, uh, averaging 20 and a half fantasy points per game, just dropped a whopping 50 burger on Tampa Bay. Um, I mean, he's Ooh. double digit, double digit targets in one, two, three, four out of the last five games. He had 15 targets against Tampa Bay. That's like, that's not fair. 270 yards and three scores, 50 points. He's going to be able to put up 50 points in any given week. Um, The guy is just an absolute machine already sitting at 13 touchdowns um, on the season that he could get to 20 touchdowns. You know, Denver, Miami, New Orleans, Atlanta for the f- final four fantasy s- regular season. But he mm-hmm. has the Chargers in week 17. He could easily finish with 20. Um, he's my stud of the season just because I feel like he has set himself maybe further apart. And he had some injury issues last season. So it's a f- more of a comeback, I think, than any of the other guys. I guess, I don't know. You could argue Mahomes. My dud is Clyde Edwards, Alaire. Uh, if you want to call him that he's currently running back 11. Yeah. Um, he just, he hasn't been as impressive as what everybody thought. I mean, he had four and a half points against Tampa, uh, only 12 touches, but that running game just is not it for them. I mean, they're the chiefs running backs are right now 22nd in fantasy football scoring. It's just not, that's not how they score their points. They pass. You have Patrick Mahomes. So what about you? Who are your yeah, studs? I mean, and historically, the, the, the Andy Reid running back has been super productive and it just hasn't, I mean, he's been productive. It just hasn't been as productive as you would have hoped. The fact that they have the number one tight end and the number one wide receiver on their team is just sick. Um, it's I would take them both at the turn. Just I'm I'm so envious. Yeah, like they're they're great. Um th- there's really nothing else to say. Um Mahomes is fantastic. I, I'm running out of superlatives. Um yeah, Clyde Edwards Hilaire just hasn't really had enough touches the last like five weeks. I mean Starting in week seven, these have been his carries, uh, eight, six, five, 14 and 11. Um, that's not enough. Um, and that doesn't really core. It corresponds a little bit with, with love bell showing up, but, um, ah, that's, that's tough. It'll be interesting to see where we end up pegging him next year. Um, I, you know, he was overdrafted. He, he was going running back seven to running back 10 this year. Um, I know he is running back 11. Um, so it's not a substantial overreach, but yeah, it's just, just not impressive enough to, uh, to put all your eggs in his basket next year. Um, depending on, on how their running back room shakes out with, with love bell. Um, yeah, they're so good. They're so fun to watch. And somehow they didn't cover three and a half against Tampa Bay last week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was Clyde, Clyde Edwards. Alaire was seeing a 65 to 75 percent snap share weeks one through six. And then week seven, 53 percent, 50 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent, 59 percent. It's just hello, Le'Veon Bell. If Le'Veon Bell is still on the roster, then I don't. I'm not super interested in Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Um, 
So it's just, it is what it is. Sorry, Le'Veon. Um, what can you do? You know, Oh man. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm already excited for Sammy Watkins to not be part of that team next year. Um, to see, you know, one, because he's always hurt. Um, but two, to kind of free up, um, you know, some opportunities for some of their burners on the outside. Um, whether it's Nicole Hardman or Demarcus Robinson, um, just to get even more speed on the field with less possession receivers. I think that even, you know, I, I know Watkins always hurt and, but he does take targets away from Kelsey and Hill. So I wouldn't be surprised to see those two be even better potentially next year. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Do you think Le'Veon resigns? He is a UFA at the end of the season, or do you think he looks elsewhere? No chance. No, no. Yeah. He'll go to whoever he gets paid the most. Come on. Do you know what he did a couple of years ago? There's no way he's signing for league minimum. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> All right. Last up, we have the undefeated 11 and 0 Pittsburgh Steelers. Before, before you and I get into our studs and duds in Pittsburgh, can we talk about whether or not you think they have the ability to run the table? Their schedule from here on out, home against Washington at Buffalo at Cincinnati at home against Indy and at Cleveland. I think all of those are winnable games. Sure. Um, I wonder what the return is in Vegas on what the odds are in Vegas on them running the table from here on out. That would be a uh, fun. It's probably plus 400. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Um, Maybe even a little lower than that. I um, here's the thing: like they look terrible against Baltimore today. Um, they've been throwing the ball so much, which isn't great for their schedule going forward. Which is, I mean, in Pittsburgh or at Buffalo or at Cincinnati, um, that's that's tough. Uh, Indy's in a dome week 16. Um, so they'll be able to get their speed going a little bit, but if there's any bad weather, um, I, I would not be surprised to see Washington beat them next week. Honestly. Um, wow. They, um, they're just, like, the, Washington's gonna be able to get pressure. They're, Washington's gonna be able to get pressure on Ben, um, with, with their front four. Washington can run the ball exceptionally well. They check it down. Alex Smith is a game manager, obviously. Um, but I really like Washington um, in the NFC East. I, I would not be surprised to see the Steelers kind of hit a road bump. The, the thing that's going to drive them to try to get to 16 and 0 and not let off the gas pedal is one, because there's seven playoff teams currently, at least in, in each conference, and the number one seed gets the bye. Um, and Kansas city is a game behind them. So they have to keep winning to get the one seed, to get the, to get the week off. Um, and I would be surprised if Kansas city loses again because they're freaking Kansas city. And I just, I'm always surprised when they lose. So I think the Steelers have to try to win out so they can get a, a week off. Um, so I, I think they're going to try. I, they're, they're going to lose at least once. Um, so, yeah, there, there's no way they run the table. It's fun to think about, though. That'd be, uh, I don't know. That'd be crazy if it actually happened. My stud for the Steelers. Hmm. Who to pick? I mean, I feel like it's. Man, like I see you, Chase Claypool, sitting at wide receiver 20. I see you and I respect you. However, I really do think that Deontay. Johnson is the wide receiver one in that offense when healthy uh, double digit targets in each of the last four games and five out of the last six um, because of injury. So he didn't really do a whole lot against Baltimore today, but I mean, it's the Ravens. It's going to happen. That's what it is. So look for him to rebound moving forward to end the season. Um, I think Deontay is probably my stud. I just hope that he can stay healthy next season. I think that you might be able to get a smidge of a discount um, on him just because of his injury and inconsistency for the first half. Um, maybe 
people will be a little bit or let him fall just a, a little bit. So maybe you can get him third round, hopefully fourth. Um, I think the big question is whether or not Juju sticks around. Um, I, if he does get out of the way, it'd be great to see what Claypool can do in a featured role. Juju is a UFA at the end of the season. So my stud is going to be Deontay. My dud, it's hard to call running back 15 a dud, but I just feel like James Connor is slumping a little bit. Um, has COVID right now, didn't play against Baltimore, but two out of the last three weeks, he's had less than six points in half PPR. He averaged less than three yards per rush. Um, I don't know. It just, he hasn't, he came out yeah. decently hot, but he also had that dud week one game. I don't think that's frustrating. Yeah. The thing that's pissed me off about James Conner is that he I, gets sniped at the goal <laughs> line. If you were to ask, yeah, exactly. If you were to ask me how many touchdowns Benny Snell has, honestly, I would say five or six. Um, because, like, I, I know the answer. So it's only three. But having Ben and Connor on my team in, in a league, I feel like they get to the one, they turn around, they give it to Connor and then he like comes out of the game or they put Benny Snell in and then he scores a touchdown and that doesn't help Ben or, and it doesn't help Connor. If you take Benny Snell's three rushing touchdowns, excluding what he did today against Baltimore, um, Connor, Connor would be RB 11. Um, wow. so like the, those three touchdowns make a huge difference of, Hey, are you RB 15? Are you an RB one? Um, so yeah, I, I think Connor's a free agent after this year. Um, I, I was expecting them to run him into the ground. Um, and, and that is kind of happened, but not really. Um, so I don't know what that backfield is going to look like going forward. Um, which I think only opens things up more for their wide receivers, um, down the line. Deontay has been great. Claypool, um, is explosive. Um, and Eric Ebron drops a lot of passes. Yes, he does. Steelers are currently 25th in running back scoring. However, James Conner is a top 15 running back because it's his role when he's healthy and playing. Um, frustrating as all hell that he keeps getting robbed at the goal line. Hopefully that doesn't continue. Um, we know we went over. Yeah, it, hasn't, it hasn't even been that much. It just no. feels like it's all the freaking time. Yeah, um, it does. I mean, it Connor really does have does. five, five touchdowns on the year, but none, none receiving. Um, I thought he would get used a little bit more out of the backfield too. Um, he did have two touchdowns called back um, earlier. It was a week 10 against Cincinnati. Um, yeah. Uh, so back -to -back plays or something know, crazy too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Thank you guys for listening. We are going to transfer to the social media page. Please follow us everywhere. We are at the FF Sackos on all social media platforms. We currently sit at 969 Twitter followers as of this recording. That's right. 969, baby. We are a whopping. 31 followers away from a thousand help us get there. You could be the one to do it. And uh, yeah, we're going to light the world on fire with memes when it happens. So there you go. Thank you for listening. Have a good night. Nice. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.